So we've just had a report from the Global Climate Change Index stating that Nicaragua is the country in the world third worst affected by climate change, by the effects of climate change. Uh, did that come as a surprise to you? And, and what, are, what are these effects? How is Nicaragua affected uh, by climate change? Uh, this was not a surprise at all, but of course it's uh, very bad news for us. Uh, not just Nicaragua came up in third place, but also Honduras, which is our neighbor country, came in first place. In the whole world, in 20 years of uh, extreme weather events, two of them, uh, of the most affected, are from Central America. So this is very concerning for us because, not, all of, not because just the social impacts of that, uh, because we don't have any special recognition within the UNFCCC process. It's very difficult for us to find out that in this negotiating process, Central American countries are not recognized officially as highly vulnerable regions. Even though we have all of these reports, all of this information, um, confirming what we already know, that we suffer a lot from floods, hurricanes, storms, uh, droughts. So it's for, for civil society, as a civil society representative, it's very important for me to make this a, a public issue and also to try to find some support from different uh, delegations and representatives to push within the UNFCCC to have some sort of recognition. I mean, presumably, with the frequency now of the floods and the hurricanes, Nicaragua, I, I imagine, simply doesn't have time to recover, to rebuild, yes. to, to rebuild infrastructure. I mean, how does that affect day-to-day -day life in a country like Nicaragua? Well, it's it's really hard to to see how how current how currently we're being every day more uh, more uh, affected about these sort of impacts, and also it's hard to see that we do not have within the um, citizenship an acknowledgement of this being related to climate change and how we should evolve into a movement to push um, developed countries to to agree within this of course this process in the UNFCCC an agreement that it's um, related to the impacts that we are seeing in our countries um, in day uh, the day work i do in in Nicaragua which is not related mostly to this international process. We have many projects trying to uh, people to uh, improve their livelihoods and also to incorporate adaptation in their way of thinking, in their way of, of managing um, their homes, in the way that uh, industries also see these issues. But it's very hard because we don't have many people uh, covering this issue and of course it, it's very important for us to raise awareness. I mean, do you feel, do negotiators in Nicaragua feel that simply by being a small country, I guess the same would apply to other small countries in Central America, that your voice is simply not being heard, that the, the, big, the polluting countries, uh, the bigger countries in the world, the wealthy countries are simply not listening to you? That's a little bit of that, but uh, as far as I can see it, even though we are a small delegation, we should have a strong link between the, the other Central American countries. For instance, we have a Central American integration system. Uh, from my point of view, they should be clearly, pu clearly here putting out these impacts that we are seeing in Central America and also establishing political relations with other vulnerable countries. Sometimes you see that the political relations they are trying to build here are more related to economical interest and not so much related to our adaptation needs. So, so this is one of the issues I want to raise. I believe even though Central American countries are small and don't have much uh, political weight in UNFCCC, we do have the chance to establish political relations with other regions that are being highly affected and of course push for the necessary financial support for adaptation, the transfer of technology and of course in a, in a wider range to have an international agreement that really push uh, developed countries and also highly contaminating countries uh, to reduce their emissions according to science. Okay, and are you hopeful we're going to see that at the end of two weeks, or be certainly be some step along, you know, along that road towards towards achieving that by the end of next week? Well, when you are around this process, you wonder uh, what what does it take for developed countries to find out that we are suffering this and that we need them to do things, to take actions, and to take lead. One thing, uh, do we need to have uh, more sandy hurricanes? Do we need to have uh, floodings in London? We are seeing that and I hope 
and I hope really that this is not the answer, that we don't need them to have and suffer the same things we suffer to acknowledge that they need to uh, sign a legally binding international agreement that really reduces emissions and peaking emissions in 2015. But uh, we still have hope in the, in the inter multilateral process, but we know of course that most of the work we have to do it at home.